appreciate being in. So when I initially started doing what I do, I make YouTube videos and Instagram videos. They're usually comedy related um, okay. I did it because I wanted attention on my writing. Okay. And people started to like my acting, which is not a bad thing. That's great. Yep. But it takes away from the opportunity to actually work on my writing because now people expect videos like every fucking day and a script takes work every fucking day. So, so now- don't make, So don't make the videos. That's, that's where I'm at. And I'm like, I feel bad because I have people that enjoy my stuff and I don't want to let them down. So now I feel obligated to make but something. You're, but, but you're letting yourself down. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I am. Listen, people were devastated when I stopped Wine Library TV. People said that I, I, I shouldn't make business videos. I shouldn't do that. You know, you know. But the reality is, people were upset when I stopped so many of my projects. Ask Gary V. You know, Daily V. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, uh, Weekly V, which I'm doing. But like, you know, people will be upset. You know, how many people are going to hit me up once Corona's over and say? Why'd you stop doing tea with Gary Vee? It was the best thing you did. That's all I see on Twitter all day long. This yeah. is the best thing I'm doing. So the reality is, is, you know, you're trying to give as much as you can, but then the reality is if you're not in a good place, you have nowhere to give. And this is going to suck you out if you yeah. eventually aren't doing what you want to do. And who says you can't come back? Who says you can't write for a good three weeks and then come hard with a nice little video and then go back? You're you're being too anal and structured on like, I got to put one out every three days or one day or once mm -hmm. a week. You go do what you need to do and you pop in and make a video when you want to. Okay. It's really that simple. Yeah, wow. it really is. It really is. But then you it have is. people on your back and it, it feels bad. You get comments, and then you also get caught where the views aren't as good. People get caught up in the algorithms and the numbers. They're like, damn, when I was doing, you know, you come back three weeks, you put out and think, you're like, damn, why is that 40,000 views instead of 80,000 or 800,000 instead of 1.3 million, whatever your world is? So mm -hmm. the reality is, is that if you're not doing you, you're not going to be able to do for them. And so it starts with you. The way to be selfless and give is to actually be selfish around knowing yourself. Mm -hmm. That's what you need to do, Jay. Okay, I'll right. do that. Listen, oh, please. one other question. One other question. I live in Detroit, but I want to be a writer, which means I need to be a PA, which means I need to move to Los Angeles. And I have been struggling with that decision because, well, it's, it's expensive as fuck in Los Angeles. But I wanted to know from you, if you were in my position and you were a young writer, you haven't been- I would, I, I would try to write one bomb ass masterpiece on some old goodwill hunting shit and put it out there. And if it doesn't take, then I would go to move to LA and fucking have a bullshit job in the sunshine and write and fucking chase my dream. Okay. I can do that. Got you. Thank Stay you. Stay well. You too. You got it. Take care. Be safe. Be safe. All right, let's keep this going. Fantasy football show, big ups on Twitter. How are you? I am wake. What's up on YouTube? Good to see you. Love the cons coming in. Yo, Alex. Okay. How's it going, man? It's good, bro. Oh, you it's know. It's going well, my friend. Good. Hope you and your family are safe out there. Thank you. You too, bro. Um, so, so it's a question that's not really based around myself. It's more based around like a message is being sent out kind of in the media, social media right now. Um, it's kind of saying you don't really need to be productive during this time. You know, a lot of people are scared, uncertain. Um, that's putting some people that are getting depressed. So do you feel that's an okay message or how would you rephrase that, that message? Is that, to people? is that the message? <clears throat> yeah, literally the headline is you don't need to be productive during this time. Yeah, but... I think I think what people are trying to do there is not, not uh, put people in a position of anxiety, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I think a much better word <clears throat> would be anxious versus productive. I think productive is such a positive word, you know, whether you're productive on your mental health, whether you're productive on your physical health, you know, I'm getting my, I'm getting my muscles going here this time. You know, are you, are you, I, I think people, I think a lot of people get happiness from being productive in their work. You know, listen, I think the toughest, this is why putting out content so hard. We're in a headline reading culture 
right? And even I can write 16 sentences other than the video I make and I can soften the title I put the video on. People are immediately like, oh, that's what you know people have to say. Mm -hmm. So my hope is that when you double click, you don't have to be productive. What it's really talking about is like, look, take a breath. Don't push yourself to anxiety. Don't burn yourself out during this time. Everyone's kind of at a standstill. At the same token, um, I, I think it's dangerous to put people in the position of like, I'm helpless and can a bigger force help me out of this or take care of me? I think it leads to entitlement and lack of accountability, which often leads to great unhappiness. So I, I, I hope that people are filtering it properly. That's how I see it, Alex. Okay. Yeah, that's that's pretty much what I was thinking you're going to say. I just wanted to kind of hear it from the man himself. Um, it's just, it's such a subjective term to me. There's so many different ways for people to be productive. It's not busting your ass, building a website, you know, it's like writing look, your feelings, whatever. Look, there's a, there's a very clear, you know, grouping of like, how do we find balance between hard work and lack of burnout? And I think that's powerful. And, and for me, listen, as much as I love hard work and I do listen, I just haven't seen it. I haven't seen the person that's made it that didn't put in hard work. I just haven't right. seen it. I've seen people inherit money and have money, but they didn't make it, you know? And so, um, and by the way, most of those people end up unhappy because they didn't make it. So I, I think it's important to be productive and happy and satisfied. That comes in a lot of different ways. Some people go to India for 14 days and meditate. Other people write for nine hours a day with a glass of wine during this time. I think it needs to be very personal. I think balance is the key, but I don't think we should demonize hard work in the same way that we shouldn't demonize meditation and passiveness. This is a self-awareness game. That was it, man. I think I think you said it and nailed it. Pro productivity should be personal. That was it. That was hoping for, man. So that's all I really right. had. Stay well, brother. Take care Have of yourself. Uh, speaking about wine, wine text is lit. I don't know if we have a wine text banner, Dustin. Hey, oh, you guys are on it. I'm telling you right now, where's my dad? I don't see him. I'm telling you right now, if, if you are not on this wine text game, if you are buying wine anywhere else on the internet, I, I, I'm, I, I don't know. I got some, I got beef with you. We might have to meet at the flagpole at 3.30 after school and fucking fight, punching people in the face. This is the fucking thing. And today's is bonkers. Let me just make sure. Today's is absolutely insanity. Complete insanity. So here's the question for Twitter. And everybody, actually, here's a fun little break. Here's the question. Let's go macro for a second. Forget wine text. Get that off the board. Macro wine question. What is your favorite wine? Please reply. Hashtag Gary V on Twitter. Uh, so Justin from wine text and others can find it. What is your favorite wine? So I can start bringing more of that to wine text. All right, let's keep it going. Dustin, let's throw up people's comments for 10, 15s. What's good? Hey, hello, Gary. How's it going? <laughs> it's going really well. I love your shirt. Yeah, right on. Hello from Maui. I love it. What's your name? I'm Zane Kiko Schweitzer. It's a real pleasure. And I'm a professional waterman, a world champion waterman, published author. And, you know, um, when I was thinking about the question to ask you. Wait a minute. What, what uh, time is it back home? It's Oh, it's three in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Hold on a second. You know what? This is what I want to say. All the people that are hitting me up on Twitter in California and Oregon and Washington and Arizona and crying about 6 a.m. Look at this man. Look at this <laughs> man's commitment. I just I got out of the water, it. man. I was got out, of, out night diving when I heard that it was a late, late call for me. I went out night diving, out uh, collecting some food for the family because, as you know, a lot of stores are shutting down here in Hawaii. 100%. but. That's on another note, man. We keep the spirits up at this point because uh, the question I had for you, Gary, was something that, uh, you know, I've been, I was thinking, you know, maybe unique. And that's um, what does happiness mean to you? And how do you balance personal success and, and financial success? And do that. you see yourself as, uh, as having a healthy balance of mind, body, and spirit? You know, you, you're a big inspiration to me, Gary. I follow you and a lot of your uh, your posts throughout the social media platforms. And, um, yeah, and that's a question I, appreciate I have it, brother. for you. I appreciate it. So mind, body, and spirit. So – and health, all that. So until six years ago, my body definitely not. And I really got serious about health and fitness on that level. On the mind and happiness side, for sure, this thing has been the driving force for me forever. 
for me, definition of happiness is the ability to do what you want to do every day, which is just a remarkable gift, which is why I want so many more people to go into their passion and not worry about making a million dollars, but but worry about making a million smiles in their lifetime, right? Um, to me, the uh, definition of happiness for me is leaving a legacy. So much of my passion, you know, there's so many contemporaries I have in entrepreneur land who have no interest in producing any content zine, in, in doing any mentoring, um, and it's so foreign to me. They'd rather they'd rather build empires continuously for themselves and the people associated with them, which I respect because I'm I absolutely have that gear in me. But for me, I'd be so unhappy if I didn't do tea with Gary Vee for free, if I didn't put out all the content, if I didn't try to leave a legacy if I didn't live a world where I was getting emails from kids that were inspired and started stuff. I have so much happiness inside of me that I feel, a, you know, this is to shoot it straight with you, Zane, a balance between gratitude and even guilt. You know, I understand that the chemicals I was given were right. I understand the circumstances of Im- being an immigrant were right, um, which made me hungry. I, I, You don't get to pick your parents. I, I won that game. So, you know, it's really hard for me to not have a level of like, wow, I have to give back. And I honestly, giving back financially once you make it is the easy part. If you can afford it, writing a check, you know, I'm proud of the things I've been doing during this time. I keep that stuff quiet, but punchline is buying, you know, tens of thousands of masks and donating them comes a little bit easier when you can afford it. It's putting the time in. Right now I have a lot of fires. I have a very intense day today. I have big responsibilities in maintaining people's jobs and growing the company, but but I feel compelled to give these two hours every morning because as stressed as I am and as much as the gray hairs are coming in during this kind of time, I I know that in these two hours, a lot of good is being done. There's a lot of people that need my energy right now. I can feel it. And so I fucking have to do it. Man, that's right. You guys, uh, your energy definitely picks me up. And, you know, Thank that's you. a question that actually hits, hits uh, home with me as well, you know, as a professional athlete. You even mentioned as well, you know, that balance between guilt and uh, you said the balance between guilt and gratitude. And, uh, you know, my my grandmother always inspired me to live life with the attitude of gratitude. And um, I I, I think I think I think gratitude, if gratitude and compassion and empathy can become bigger, cooler words, you know, I think we can really win this game. We just need a lot more kindness in our society. There's so much judgment and there's so much triggering to to blame. There's so much anxiety. And a lot of that comes from actual entitlement. If we were grateful for what we had versus, you know, uh, envious of what we don't have. And the things that people envy are such fucking materialistic horseshit. I, I wish people knew more mil- multimillionaires and realized how much unhappiness is at that level. If they really knew it, if they really lived it, if they really lived that anxiety and insecurity of most, not all, of course, they would uh, they would not aspire for it. Yeah, totally. Well, I really appreciate anyway, that. Zane, I appreciate you, sharing man. Your time with us. I I wish you nothing but the best, brother. Right. Take care, well, my friend. I'll... Stay well. Nick, thanks for being in the comments. Gino Productions, big shout out to you. I see you in the YouTube comments. Uh, Chart, Carter, great to see you. Shalom, Carson, Paulina Y, thank you so much for being on YouTube with us. Crafty Belfast, what's good? Janelle, a lot of YouTube comments. I'm feeling that. A lot of Twitter comments. Not as many Facebook comments. I need to see the Facebook comments. Come on. I'm ready, Jess. So, so oh. the, fa- the Facebook comments aren't coming in because we had to set it up as like a custom channel. So it, it, the platform doesn't recognize it as being Facebook, but I'm going to I'm going to figure it out moving forward. That way. Yeah, <laughs> I'll leave now. <laughs> yeah, I'll see you later, Dustin. All right. Mr. Top Floor, what's good? Chloe. Hi. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Good, thanks. How are you? Awesome. Um, well, my question, it's kind of like balancing. I want to know your perspective on balancing running a business and my passion, which is writing. Um, I wrote a book. I kind of shopped it around. I had some interest, ultimately got rejected. And, uh, but they gave me really great advice on my, my rejection letter. But instead of like pulling down there, um, which, which I think would have been the natural kind of response. Instead, I went all in on my business and, 
I now run a digital kind of marketing agency where I help out writers, um, actually, which I'm very passionate about. It fulfills me. Um, I have one full-time person working for me and five other part-time. And I don't know. I just, I don't know. When I sit down to write, I think about business and my business is booming. Like people are reading more books now. And I, I picked up two new clients since this whole pandemic has started. So I'm in a really good spot. And I don't know. I just, I don't know what you think. I listen to yourself all the time. And I was like, what would Gary say in this situation um, about kind of balancing those two? I would do them both. And I would be okay with if I'm in a moment in my business that I go all in for 87% on the business and 13 on writing on a side or even, by the way, 100 you know, my great love in business is Wine Library. It was my first love. It was my family business. Um, I went super hard. And then I left and started VaynerMedia. And during that time, especially the, first, the years three, four, five, six, and seven of VaynerMedia, I really went all in on VaynerMedia. Because year one and two, I was still had too many responsibilities. I had to make sure Brandon and my dad were good on Wine Library without me because I was really the leader there. And, and then, you know, a year ago, I just missed it. I missed wine commerce and I invented wine text, you know, and I, for my dad. And so you might be able to write in three years. I, I think when people make, people make the mistake and they think balance is a daily thing. Balance is a life thing. It's a, for, it's your whole life. You're such a young woman. Like you might be able to build your business up right now to so much stability and save money that you might be able to in 11 years to take two years off and write your fucking novel. I guess people go ahead. I I don't know. I fear that if I let it go for too long, it'll just be it. And passions don't die. Passions are your best friend. They're sitting there waiting for you whenever you come back. They are. They're your best friends. They're always there. Sports cards have been there. Wine have been there. You know, seven years ago, I went all Gary B. 100% built a humongous company have nothing but opportunity, could go on and do all sorts of things. And here I am, you know, at 44, and two of the biggest things I talk about are wine and sports cards, my passions from when I was 15. Um, two things that were not coming out of my mouth at all three years ago and four years ago for the year. I, I have a funny feeling if you look at all my content three and four years ago, I'm not sure if there's a single mention of wine or baseball cards or sports cards. Passions are always there. They're just sitting over there. Your best friend just waiting for you to sit by the bench. Some fucking Forrest Gump shit. You understand? I understand. <laughs> Balancing, everybody debates on a daily basis. It's their number one mistake. It's not a daily thing. It's not a weekly thing. It's not a monthly thing. It's not even a yearly thing. It is a full life thing. Your business is rocking right now. It's okay to go 100% in for 36 months. I promise you pen and paper, laptop, and fucking Word documents are sitting right there waiting for you, open arms with a big hug and kiss and ready to go. And by the way, you'll be a different woman at that point and you might be able to um, be in a situation where you might be even more creative. Yeah. Can I ask you a business question then? You can. Um, I interviewed someone last week to be my second full-time person and I had kind of started recruiting months ago before all this happened and I found a person that I think would do well but I don't know now if it's the time to take on a full-time staff um like like I said things are moving up for me but I don't know if it's, I, I think as long as you over communicate with her like hey things are moving up for me but it's uncertain. Anything could happen. I don't want to screw you. This is not the most stable situation. Plus, I'm a small company. Um, and give her the right to choose. Or him, you know? Where did you get your clarity from? <laughs> you know what's funny? I actually think, besides natural DNA, and I always think I was born with wisdom. I do think I'm an old soul. I was very attracted to older people when I was little. I would always hang out with like grandmas and grandpas in the playground in New York and New Jersey. Besides that, I actually think it's a little bit of a lack of education. I'm not even kidding. I think that I so didn't conform to the school system and I so didn't pay attention starting in third grade that I was just in my own fucking world. And I think in some weird ways, that simplicity has been a huge guiding light. I keep it basic as fuck. And we all appreciate you so much for that. <laughs> Thank you so much. I wish you well. Take care of yourself. Big shout out to Violet J on YouTube, Ginger Beloved. 
Uh, Facebook people, if you want to get your comments shouted out or pinned, you can switch over to Twitter or YouTube Live. Um, lots of comments coming through there. Andrew, what's up? Brad Roeder, what's good? Eli Murphy, what is good? I don't make money as a middle schooler during this quarantine. Eli, say, sell every single thing in your room on eBay and Facebook Marketplace. Chris. Hey, how's it going, Gary? It's really good. It's good to see you. You were talking about uh, seven, eight years ago and like, hey, Chris, uh, check that out. <laughs> that was a video you made me seven, almost eight years ago when I had a tiny, tiny little office. And you talk about documenting. Here we are eight years later. I'm going to ask you a question about like a national company I have. And a lot of that is, is you, man. So first of all, thank you very much. Uh, getting right down to it. Uh, business owners, this is for like the, the leadership people that are following you, the people that followed you eight years ago that now, you know, if they've listened, they've got kind of something. Them. So it's a difficult time with the pandemic and everything else. Like what advice do you give to leaders like myself with not only, not only keeping like the synergy of a team intact, but also morale and everything else, because yeah. like every employee is thinking layoffs, financial times, everything else. Like, what's your advice to the leaders on here? Communication and clarity. Literally at 11 o'clock, I go on with a 20-person call of 20 leaders of Vayner, give them the update of what I see this week. And then at 11.30 today, I go and address the entire organization on live stream for 30 minutes. And I'm going to tell them the truth. Lots of optimism, lots of opportunity, and lots of uh, unsettling uh, lack of data. And when you don't have good information, it's hard to make good decisions. And uh, a lot of uh, a lot of issues at our client level, you know, bankruptcies, uh, p payment delays, uh, lots of stuff, muckery, muckery, muckery. And so um, I'm going to try to find the balance of inspiration and transparency, which is very difficult because most people will not hear the inspiration. They'll hear the fear. If I lead to anything like, oh, some of our clients might go out of business and thus, you know, immediately everyone's like, I'm getting fired. Yeah. So, you know, I'm worried about that. Uh, so I'm going to try to find that balance. I'm going to address that on, right? I'm going to speak to that. You know, at some point I'm going to say something that's just transparent and then I'm going to feel it and say, guys, I know you're sitting there right now in your house and you're like, oh, that means we're going to have huge layoffs. Listen, if you're great, you're fine. If you're contributing, you're fine. You know, uh, obviously, we'll have to look at the reality situation. But, you know, I, I've been looking at how much we pay for bananas and how much we pay for candles and how much we pay for cleaning our offices to do anything I can possibly do to save jobs. That is my number one priority. Um, and and I just have to speak that truth. Yeah, that that's never talked about, right? How efficient our businesses come when you suddenly have to look at it in a different perspective, right? It's uh, of course, yeah. No, no matter how much, no matter how you know frugal you are, no matter how CFO driven you are, there's always an opportunity to cut more costs. Always. Are you still getting the workouts in? I am. I feel pretty good. I'm feeling like it's starting to come together. I've, I've been I've been working out every day. Mike is uh Mike and I are teleconferencing in on FaceTime on the laptop. Um, I've been feeling pretty good about that. I'm feeling uh, pretty good about that, and I'm up for this challenge. Like, it's super painful. Uh, a friend of mine said a good analogy the other day about if you have to let people go, it's like being in the forest and a tree falls on your leg, and whoever the park ranger's like, look, you're gonna die if you don't we don't cut off your leg, right. and and, you know, you cut off your leg and you fucking love your leg. Like there's nobody, you, you don't want to let go of anybody right now. But yeah. if, but if you can't make payroll, then the whole thing dies. If you can't pay your bills or your debt or whatever it might be for people. And so this is real life. It's a liquidity event and, you know, you've got to be a, a professional. A lot of people have small businesses and don't have overhead and they need to just be more humble in their own lives. And then other people like ourselves have a lot of employees and you got to look at everything. It's like everything you've always talked about though, right? If you just real if you're human and you're keeping them informed i found uh, i talked to the management team last week the other in the other brands and it was just like if you're having those conversations they're you're bringing those fears to life in a good way you know what i mean in like a good way. yeah you're in keeping them informed they know it might happen and uh yeah anyways man i appreciate you hey, we, we were supposed to uh we were supposed to connect in edmonton but then it got canceled i know, I know. So, i'm uh, coming back though edmonton is not going to be fully canceled it's put that one's postponed i will be in edmonton that is fantastic. Thanks for everything I'll you do. I'll see you then. Good luck.